Get it? Flip fluids? Ha! <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another episode of CGC Weekly here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. This week we're going to be talking about something that's been sweeping the CG, not just the blender, the entire CG industry, and that is Flip Fluids. Flip Fluids is a revolutionary new fluid engine that's completely changing the entire CG industry. But what makes Flip Fluids different than a standard fluid simulation, and what does it bring to the table that everybody is so hyped about? Well, in this episode, we're going to investigate that, in addition to investigating the Flip Fluids add-on that's currently in development for Blender. To explain how the different fluid simulations work, I called in a special friend to do some explaining. Hey, CG Sauce, Grant here. Fluids are cool, but what in the world are fluids? This is a water molecule, perhaps my favorite fluid out of all because it keeps me alive. Water and other fluids have a really cool property where they tend to slip off of similar molecules. So they won't stick to other water atoms, instead they'll slide. There will be a nice smooth slide between them. So in the case that we have one water molecule here and one water molecule here, and say gravity is pulling both of these down but this one won't fall, this one will simply slide right off the top of the other. This is what allows fluids to slide off each other and conform to the shape of the container that they're in. So it really wouldn't be too hard to simulate just particles colliding like that. There are plenty of models that we already have that do that. The issue is how many particles we'd have to deal with. In a 0.05 milliliter drop of water, there are over 1.5 sextillion molecules of water. That is a lot. And if you tried to simulate that, your computer would straight up just catch on fire and just... If, Dunzo. So that poses an issue. How are we supposed to simulate something when we have so many of them? That's when somebody had an idea. Well, if we interpret every single particle as just a circle, why don't we make those circles bigger? That way each circle, say, represents like a hundred particles. And that's exactly what people did. So say we have a cup of water. A cup of water would traditionally have, that didn't draw very well, a cup of water would traditionally have just tons and tons of particles in it. But if we interpret everything with really big particles, we end up with significantly less particles that we have to calculate. Just like that, we all of a sudden simplified billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of particles into what looks like maybe 30. That seems a lot more reasonable. Now, of course, 30 particles really isn't enough to create an accurate fluid simulation from, so usually we use a lot of smaller particles, maybe uh, have a couple million in there, but nothing close to what an actual fluid simulation or actual fluid would be like. Now, as time went on, these fluid simulations became more and more advanced and more and more optimized. They created different types of particles to do different things, further restricting the amount of particles that were actually necessary in the fluid simulation. These fluid particles were called tracer, float, and drop particles. Now, say we have a domain object for our simulation right here. And in our domain, we have a nice, cool waveforming, just like that. We can plot the different types of particles actually on this image right here. So, float particles. Float particles actually generate from drop particles, technically. But they sit along the surface and just kind of chill here. Uh, tracer particles are kind of just chilling in the middle. And these are relatively less dense than a lot of the other particle systems because they take up such a large volume and they can be approximated a lot easier. Last, we have the drop particles. And drop particles come off of part, or parts of the white, or I guess part of the fluid simulation that is falling or is being launched up in the air. So if we have, for whatever reason, splashback, those would be drop particles flying through the air, or if we have things falling off the tip of this curling wave, those would all be drop particles. Now this is where the FLIP system enters the game. FLIP stands for Fluid Implicit Particle. These particles are very densely packed at the surface and allow for a much better surface mesh generation when it gets to that step. Now, also in the FLIP model is another type of particle called a bubble particle. And a bubble particle, well, it's a bubble if that makes any sense. So say this wave were to crash and it caught some air with it, right? Those bulb particles would now be down here. Um, and these will eventually turn into float particles as well, similarly to drop. So basically, there's a life cycle of these particles. It goes from a drop particle to a bubble particle to a float particle. 
And that's kind of the lifespan of the typical particle that's not a tracer or a flip particle. So these extra flip particles are what makes this such a great model. It's because it has so much more to work with in terms of surface mesh generation because of those extra particles. Anyway, that's about it from CG Sauce. Sending it back to you, Grant. All right, so that was cool and all, and I definitely learned a few things researching for that, but how does this impact Blender? Is this going to be implemented into Blender's fluid simulation system? And the answer is maybe, but not maybe. In the future, Blender's looking to implement Mantaflow, which is a fluid engine that encompasses pretty much all fluids. So it takes care of smoke, it takes care of liquids, all that stuff that you could be simulating. However, I'm not really sure if they're using a flip fluid model. I couldn't find too much about it, so it's definitely a new engine, but it never really says if it uses the flip model. But there is no need to fear because somebody is working on a flip fluid add-on for Blender. I'm sure at least some of you have seen the promotional content asking for beta testers. It's a really impressive add-on. And I got into that beta testing program, so I'm going to give you a little sneak peek inside at the flip fluids add-on and what its current state is. So I went ahead and I opened up a new instance of Blender here. You can see that it's, you know, just standard Blender. Uh, but we do have a few different things now that we have the Flip Fluid add-on. We have this tab over here which allows us to do a few different things with the Flip Fluid add-on. But really it's not all that useful. Um, but more importantly is the actual Physics tab. Oops, I just offset my center. Um, so let me reset that really quick here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a domain object here, right, because all fluid simulations require a domain. We're gonna make it nice and big. So SX8, SXY8, there we go. And then we'll make it a little bit taller. So this will serve as our domain. And I'll come over to the physics tab and that's where we have the flip fluid option. It's not in the standard flip fluid area here, it's down here. So I can click this and I can select the type of object. You can see we have domain, fluid, obstacle, inflow, and outflow. So I want this to be my domain object, so I'll select that. And let's give it something else to work with because we don't have any fluid in our actual simulation here. So I'll add a monkey head here, move that up, just like that, flip fluid, and then we'll make this a fluid object, all right? Now the flip fluids add-on on its own is pretty cool just because it implements a lot of higher resolution surface meshes and stuff like that. Um, but it also implements a lot of other cool features such as viscosity. So you can play with the viscosity of your fluid and you can also turn on white water generation. There are also a bunch of different presets. Well, right now there are only two as of 1.3b, uh, again, the beta version. Um, but hopefully there will be more when the actual version comes out. So if I add one of the presets to the stack here, and I go ahead and bake our simulation. And this is gonna take a while because that's it's just a fluid simulation. You can see that the fluid object spawns from our monkey head, falls to the ground. You can see these particles. These particles are the white water generation. And as it reaches the ground, it splashes out more white water everywhere. Uh, but you can see here just how the fluid simulation works. And I'm not gonna let this go all the way through because I'd rather show you guys some extra features instead of just one really long simulation. But you can see, just like that. And of course we can crank up the resolution, but one of the coolest things I think comes with the Flip Fluid add-on is the ability to resume baking. Like, I wanted this feature for so long, and finally someone brought it here. And the only other thing I want is the ability to pause and resume renders. All right, so I'm gonna reset this render and I'm going to show you guys just how viscous this can get, right? So if we come into the world settings here and enable viscosity. Five viscosity is pretty high. We'll turn off white water generation. And now if we bake our animation once more, we get a completely different and equally cool result. And there you go. So before where things splashed out, now Suzanne just kind of <laughs> plops into a little bubble of goo. <laughs> it's kind of nasty actually. <laughs> it looks like you just smashed a monkey head against the floor. <laughs> So what do you guys think about flip fluids and the flip fluid add-on? Do you think this is going to be something that's a game changer or do you think it's just going to be meh? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Hey you, yeah you, you want to become a Blender genius? Head over to cgcookie.com and hook yourself up with a subscription for awesome Blender content. It's really cool.